the days of dilemma whether i wanted to conduct a walk or not finally it was decided that i will be exploring and tracing down the long forgotten history of the hugli mambara situated on the banks of ganga with tension and panic rising within i thought why would such an important part of our history be permanently erased from our memories because of our utter negligence with whatever information i could gather after visiting the mambara i created a narrative on my own giving it a fresh perspective not just haji mohammad mohsin about whom we hardly have any information in history his benevolent nature who wanted to help those in need but also the architecture of the mambara is sure to draw our attention towards it before renovation on the main arch we see the engraving of a typical french of lotus buds meant for decorative purpose the lotus is a fair flower of south asia which symbolizes goodness and spirituality so it is hard for us to restrict its symbolism to a particular religion however after renovation we don't see similar kind of engraving the mamara shows us a sense of public piety double classical roman arches depict the adoption of a cross cultural art form so considering the architecture of the mamara to be only an islamic one would be wrong so it is not exceptionally islamic in its essence then we have the kanguras which are little replicas of the fortress walls encompassing the entire monument the skyline and also the twin towers at the entrance kanguras are mainly found in the rajput forts which later came to be used in tombs and in mambaras as well the watch tower in between the twin towers is clearly visible of the prominent colonial structure the clock had been purchased and installed around 1852 from the same company from where the big ben was bought and installed in 1859 Hence, as per the year, the Mamara's clock is the oldest in the world, not Big Ben's. The huge arch at the entrance depicts a true cobbled arch. Each side of the main arch is flanked by two smaller arches, and on the left we have the Tazia Khana, and on the right we have the Sharbat Khana. Tazias are mainly jhankis or tablaws that are taken out for procession during Muharram. Not just mullahs, but important members are allowed to hold the tazias too. In the middle of the courtyard we see a water channel which has been termed as Uza Khana the water channel in the middle like any other mosque is kept for purification purposes for washing of feet face and hands performing wudu before stepping into the prayer hall The mambara is a double storied complex with rows of rooms that were earlier used for guests who used to come from all around the country to attend Muharram expressing their grief. Presently the rooms on the ground floor are used for official purposes and the first floor rooms of the monument has been turned into a madrasa that imparts religious education to the Shia children. The pillars of the complex had been built of plaster of limestone mortar mixed with organic gelatinous substances which would give strength to the structure just like the early Mughal times. It could have been so that Hooghly being an important port would have escalated trading activities there so it wouldn't be inappropriate for us to consider that these rooms could have been used by merchants as temporary shelters walking down the lane crossing the fountain bed finally we reach the prayer hall which has a facade of seven bays leading us to the congregational space inside and ending with a qibla wall photography was strictly prohibited inside the hall so pictures had to be taken from google So after studying the directions the prayer hall is surely unusual of its kind because the entrance of the mambara is on the north but we entered the prayer hall from the south and the qibla wall is on the west that's on our left facing mecca this is not a domed mosque but it is a flat roofed one with an overhanging chhajja which must have been built to prevent rain water from entering the congregational space So the architecture of a particular monument is not just based on influence but according to the local requirements. As we enter the prayer hall we see walls covered with lines from hadith the maxims of prophet hazrat muhammad the bibi khana or the balconies on the first floor inside the prayer hall were meant for women to sit behind the screen as they were not allowed to sit with men and listen to the sayings of the maulvi and offer their prayers. At the back side of the mambara Mohsin's deed had been engraved on the walls both in Urdu and English where there is a mention of his desire to build an mambara at Hugli but the outer surface of the wall has come off so if we try to read the deed now it's not really comprehensible my motive was to bring into limelight the history of the mambara the story behind its construction 
why did such an eminent personality go missing in history in spite of all his contributions but also the sheer beauty of the monument a story of which i am a part of because currently we are studying art and architecture which constantly made me think about the various influences on indian architecture so hugli mambara is not just to be known or remembered because of its unknown history but also because of its beautiful architecture so this is diktisha chatterjee signing off thank you for joining us on our journey of exploring the hugli mambara